Want to get through Yang's gang before you sprout some gray hairs? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you some level specific fight shortcuts and tricks you can use to slow down your rapidly aging life and make it easier. Hopefully by the end, you've picked up something you didn't know or realized how you can make an annoying fight look easy. With these, everyone should be able to shave a few years off their run. In a good way, of course. Starting with the squats, there's not many areas to talk about, since it's the opening stage and acts as a tutorial more or less. Most of the advice I can give is near the end when you enter the warehouse. The only quick tips I can give before that is when you're on the roof with these three henchmen working. Stand near the ledge and you can just toss them all into the alley, killing them instantly. Now for the warehouse, as you enter it from the second floor, this room likely has the most enemies in the whole stage. However, you can dwindle them down by five through some stealth kills if you approach them in the right order. If you run straight ahead, you'll see the first enemy walking by. You can just sneak up from behind and take them down. From here, keep going straight till you get to another one overlooking the edge. You can knock them over the edge, but it'll cause everyone to know you're in there. Instead, just take them out with some stealth, then work your way back. Go back to the door you entered from and head to the right and drop down. There's one guy overseeing everything, which you can also take down with a quick jab to the back. From here, you can drop down to the right and slowly just kind of walk around without making sure no one can see you. There's one enemy standing here that doesn't notice you and you can quickly take them down. Then once they're down, just walk a bit forward and there's one kind of just standing here. If you wait till the right timing, they're not looking. You can take this one down with some more stealth, and then from here, you need to fight everyone else at the same time. The final room before the boss has three guys. As you enter, it may seem as though they're talking to each other, but because the options don't appear fast enough, it's actually you they're talking to. But if you don't care to chit chat, you can just run up to the big guy and stealth kill him. Somehow that's being sneaky here. You can use this moment to run up to the big guy and initiate the fight with a one-shot kill on him. Depending on your approach, sometimes the other two won't even notice you kill a man in front of them, leading you to get another kill for free too. Next stage is the club, and this may be the biggest stage of the whole game and where I consider the game to really start. You can get some odd stealth kills as you enter, but other than that you'll be fighting your way through most of the first rooms. The first sneaky kill you can land is against these two hanging out if you enter the room running. Kick the bag over to them and one will fall over, ready to be executed immediately. Next, if you enter the next room with a pipe, these two can be attacked at once, leading to both of them getting dazed and ready to be taken down. You'll need to execute the second guy fast though, before he recovers. Speaking of takedowns, just want to point out that the more enemies you beat up, the higher chance of an enemy leveling up to become an elite. So if you're worried about one coming up, you can always just choose to not execute anyone and just drain everyone's HP instead. Now, as you get into the betting room, there's these two girls working the bar. Sometimes this enemy type can be annoying to fight, so best you can do here is quickly turn into a 1v1. You can do this by entering the room and grabbing a bottle to the immediate left. With this, you can just walk up and throw it towards the one looking down to put her into an execute state immediately. Afterwards, you're safe to fight and focus on the one left. A few rooms later, there's a room of five enemies training. Upon entering the room to the left, you'll find a dragon statue if you need a boost and a health restore. There's also a pipe beside it as well if you need a bit more offense. Instead of just picking a fight, however, you can simply just walk up and talk your way through the room. Answer the question with a non-violent answer, and boom, no fight needed. Above this door are the three trials. I'm ready. Then step through the door. If you're looking for a fight though, be sure to surprise attack the red, black robed Akatsuki cosplay guy first as he does have slightly more health than the rest. Once you are in the first trial and all the doors open up, you're expected to take down everyone you see. Instead, run up to the second floor and wait around this walkway. Once someone attempts to attack you, you may simply evade and immediately throw them off the ledge, instantly killing all of them. Everyone in this room can fall for it. Even the disciple who talks to you in here can be instantly defeated. Once you're done the room, just go grab a pipe or brick on the first floor and run back up and throw it at her. Once stunned, she's standing right against the ledge, leading to a free ledge throw. Finally, there's the one-on-one -on -one fight with the Disciple with a bow staff. If you're not feeling up to her new attack pattern and have some focus attacks, you can instantly disarm her for the rest of the fight by throwing out a leg sweep as soon as you enter. Afterwards, she fights like any other Sean Disciple. Now the museum stage is a bit annoying to walk around. I still get lost in here. For this level, the best advice possible is to just take the elevator. Yeah, that's it. Now you're at the boss. There's nothing else you gotta do. If you need some tricks though and are looking for some fights, I've got a few ideas. 
This level's floors upon floors, so don't be afraid to just bait enemies to ledges and throw them over, as nothing's better than a few instant kills. There is one thug waiting to surprise you around one of the first corners. If you take it sharp though, you can actually get the jump on him with a quick takedown. This level also introduces the bodyguard arch type enemy. Although these guys look tough, they fall easily if you got a katana. With katana equipped and the charge fist ability unlocked, you have access to the insta kill move. Simply walk up and charge up the attack and let it rip. If spaced right, they'll go down immediately. Sacrifice the katana in the process, but it's totally worth it. Spacing can be tricky sometimes to do this because if you're too close, they'll dodge it. You'll be seeing this trick a few times in later levels. During this hallway segment with the mannequins near the end of the stage, although it looks like the ninja girls get the jump on you, you can actually take out the first one instantly as she's technically not looking at you yet. Even if she attacks you, apparently she's doing this blind. Once you get to the tower, there's not many tricks I can give you during the first half, as most of the enemies come to you since they all know you're there. Once you're below the tower though, that's where we can cut some corners, save some time, and likely a few years off your life. First, there's the direct shortcuts by just jumping off the ledges. Although you will die here, if your death count is next to nothing, you may just deem it worth it if you want to avoid a fight you don't like. When you enter the first CEO's Disciple, instead of just walking towards her as she monologues, you can instead approach her faster by doing dashes. This will let you get the jump on her and land the first few hits for free. If you brought a katana with you, it's possible to instant kill her with it too. Now my favorite tip and maybe my most satisfying kill in the whole game is just being able to one-shot the CEO's best disciple as she watches you get ready. This girl is just standing in a room full of weapons for you, just asking to die. To make this fight as easy as possible, run in and grab a katana off the shelf to the right. From here, just walk over to her and give her the old insta-kill. Careful of spacing though, as she will dodge it if you're too close. Even if you miss though, you can simply quit and reload and you'll be put right back before entering the room, giving you infinite tries to get the right spacing to stab her. Finally, there's the sanctuary. The final stage before fighting Yang takes place at around 5am for some reason. As annoying as he is, you'll definitely want your health high and your age low going into this fight, even if it's just to get more time fighting him to learn his patterns. To do that though, you're going to have to get through his main defense line outside of his office, made up of six annoying enemies. Five of the six enemies can actually be insta-killed if you're in the right place. Take the big guy and his two helpers over to the cliffside and bait them to attack. With this, you can dodge and punish by just throwing them off the cliff. That's it. Luckily, you'll also get their weapons, which can make the fighting the big guy even easier. Remember where the guy's sword is though, as this will become super useful later. Tossing enemies off the cliff can also be done with the girl and Sean's disciple. All you gotta do is get their attention, bait them over to the one ledge, and make them fly. Lastly, Yang's last line of defense is a bow staff using Elite Disciple. For this guy, you have a few options. Option 1 is to unequip the bow staff from him using a focus attack or stun him with a brick. There's plenty laying around if you need him. This will give you an easier fight if you just feel like fighting him. However, there are better and more effective ways of dealing with him. If you know where the katana is that I told you to remember, you can easily use it on him. If you've been following this video, you know what's next. Just walk up to him and give him the old insta-kill. Another method is to simply just bait him back to the cliff edge like the rest and toss him over. It's anticlimactic, but it works. Once you get rid of him, that's it. Hopefully these tips helped you get through some annoying fights or avoid some altogether. By the time you reach Yang, you shouldn't have a gray hair in sight. Let me know in the comments if I overlooked any other tricks to some other fights too, as maybe someone else will find it useful.